right, we're back out in the shop working on the white again. Um, got the motor all mocked up, um, bolted into where it has to go. It looks like it's almost a little bit out of square, but um, the holes were square when I drilled them, so I'm gonna go with it. Um, there's no clearance issues on the drive shaft. It's just when you go around and look at it from the back side on the pump side, um, it just dives off uh, to the left just a little bit. Um, but I mean, it's got U joints. That's not really an issue. It, I think it's almost designed to go that way. I was trying to take a look at the other, other white, and it looks like that drive shaft's angled just a little bit too. So I'm, I'm not too worried about it. Um, but I'm just about all set to try and fire this up and drive it around the shop here a little bit, see if the, the rear end works. Just a couple more things to do. I've got my battery hooked up to it right now. I'm just gonna try and turn it over and see if I have engine oil pressure. Uh, if I'm good there, then I just have to run to the store, pick up some fuel line and probably a couple other things. I'm probably gonna grab a fuel filter too because I have no idea what's in that tank. But uh, let's check and see if we have engine oil pressure, I guess. So these Vanguards have fully pressurized lubrication systems. Um, they just have a light that indicates, yes, I have oil pressure. No, I don't have oil pressure. It's not going to tell you how much there is, but um, as long as that light goes out when the engine is running, you have oil pressure. So there's just a little switch down there. Um, right now I've got my um, test light just hooked up to it right there. So basically when this is all hooked up, you have an open circuit. Um, so the switch is in an open position allowing electricity to flow through it because there's no pressure there. And then when pressure builds, if the engine's making oil pressure, it's going to cause that switch to close and the light will go out. Um, so when I hook this up, I should have the light be on on the test light. And then when I go ahead and turn the engine over, that light should go out because I should be creating enough pressure to close that switch and cut off a flow of electricity. All right, got everything hooked up here. Test light is hooked up to the switch. The other end goes to the positive on the starter solenoid. And I have light, meaning that there is no oil pressure there right now. Switch is open, light is on, no oil pressure. Um, so when I go ahead and turn the engine over, I should build enough pressure to close that switch and turn the light off. Let's see what happens. Good enough for me. Light went out. That means I've got oil pressure. Let's see how long it takes for it to come back on here. There we go. Oil pressure is gone. Look at that. I maybe taught somebody something today. All right. So that means I'm ready to proceed. Um, I gotta go pick up some fuel line, dump some gas in the gas tank and we'll crank it over and see what happens. I think I'm all set to go other than that. Um, it's getting exciting. Stay tuned. Okay, it's Saturday night. Uh, I'm just about ready to fire this thing up. Hopefully, maybe, we'll see what happens. Uh, I ran to the store, picked up some new fuel line, fuel filter, uh, picked up an air cleaner, got that installed already. Uh, just finished up welding an atrocious exhaust pipe because it's late and geometry sucks, so uh, I'll probably redo that maybe tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see if I want to run back to town and pick up some more pipe. Um, I'm not sure if the fuel pump was working on this or not, so I guess I'll find out here when I crank it over and see what happens, but uh, I'm going to wait for that pipe to cool off, bolt that on, throw some gas in it, and crank it over and see what's up. Here we go. Okay, we're ready for a test fire. I have no idea what's gonna happen. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit loud if it does run because it's straight piped right now, so I don't wanna run it for too long without a muffler either, just because that's how I am. Um, the gas tank smells absolutely terrible. I dumped some fresh stuff in there. If there was anything left in there at all, it's not much, so hopefully, I mean, I don't even know if the fuel pump's gonna draw, so we'll just check it out here and see what happens, I guess. Hopefully nothing blows up.
drawing like should there and no gas. Look around this for a while and see why I'm not getting fuel. I may have had the fuel shut off valve closed instead of open, even though that doesn't really make any sense, but I have fuel in the fuel filter right now, however rancid it looks. Bam! Fuel pump. Thank you, Amazon Prime. Even came with its own separate little filter. Uh, I guess let's install this and see if we can get this engine running and drive this thing around the shop a little bit. I have a feeling even if it does fire up and it does move, this is just going to be puking oil all over the place. But only one way to find out. Let's give it a shot. fuel coming in somewhere and making a mess so the fuel pump works but I think my fuel line from the pump to the carburetor is too big and that's why that's leaking. So let's take care of that real quick. Okay I had to replace the fuel line from the pump to the car because the piece that I had on there was too loose and uh, I was dripping gas everywhere at the carb so at least I know the fuel pump's working. Um, I have that piece replaced so I'm going to go ahead and hook the battery back up to it and try and fire it up. For like the tenth time.
All right, guys, that's the end of that. Uh, it's gonna be a while before I work on this again. I need to get it outside, pressure wash it, uh, clean all the stuff off the rear end, and um, just gotta get it cleaned up before I can really do a whole lot more work on it, which I'd like to keep working on it, but um, it's gonna be a little while before I can get outside and pressure wash anything. Probably got a good four months yet before I'm gonna be able to get out and do that, but I might fuss with it here and there and see what I can do. I've got a couple issues to work out. Um, I don't know if it really matters or not, but like I said earlier, this drive shaft is skewed just a little bit, and it seemed to be getting really hot back here. Um, and I don't know if something's not aligned properly or if it's just getting hot because that's what it does. It gets hot and it's smoking because of all the old grease and stuff, but it almost sounded like there was a bearing that was kind of going, so that makes me a little bit nervous, but uh, all I can do is just keep working on it and see what it does, see what happens. and will go from there but I'm just happy that it moves um, the rear end is obviously good um, I might have some work to do with the valve for the lift cylinder uh, I have travel in the up direction but when I push it forward I have nothing so I think that valve something's got to be up with that unless that one is only no it's not I was gonna say unless it is just a one-way valve but it can't be because I have up and down pressure with that cylinder so uh, well like I said that's it for now thanks for watching uh, it'll probably be a while before I do another video on this tractor, but I got a lot of other stuff coming down the pipe, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.